Let's say we're an archer with a bow and arrow trying to aim at a bullseye. Our goal is to find a function that describes the probability density of each point around the circle. Okay, so firstly we're going to assume that because the board is a circle that it doesn't matter in which direction we miss, it just matters how far away from the bullseye we are and that ring should have the same probability density throughout. Additionally, we're going to assume that it doesn't matter if you miss in the x direction or the y direction, these are completely independent random variables. So from there we're going to assign the bullseye to the point zero, zero, and then we can define a probability density function that takes in the distance that a point is away from the bullseye. We don't like the square root in the function expression, so we're actually gonna define a new function that takes in the square distance we are away from the origin. We're allowed to do this because we're just defining a probability density function and the relationships to the points X and Y are still preserved. So now we have that P is a joint density function of x and y that takes in the squared distance, x squared plus y squared, from the origin. Because x and y are identically distributed and they're independent, we can actually split up this joint distribution function into the product of a distribution function of x and a distribution function of y. What we can do now is isolate the variables by setting one of them equal to zero. So if we set y equal to zero, we see that our probability density function for x is proportional to our made up function p at x squared. If we do the same thing for y, now we have that the product of p of x squared and p of y squared is proportional to our original function p of x squared plus y squared. What we have now is a functional equation, basically p P is a function that has to satisfy this equation for any values of x and y. It's a well-known fact in analysis and calculus that the only function that satisfies this equation is going to be in the form of an exponential or e to the x. Because the probability density decreases with the distance, we're going to say that p of x is an exponential with a negative coefficient at the top. What we're actually going to do now is just focus on the probability density function for one of the coordinates x because x and y are identically distributed, so we just want to find the distribution of one of them. The density function for x is proportional to p of x squared. So now we have a basic formula for the probability density of the x coordinate of our bow and arrow. Now all we need to do is find these coefficients. So the first thing we're going to note is that a probability density function must have integral 1 over the entire sample space. In this case, the sample space is all real numbers, and we're going to integrate our function over all real numbers and set that equal to 1 to get a relationship between the coefficients. To integrate this function, we actually have to break out some calculus techniques. We're going to simplify the integral to just the exponential function that we're integrating without the coefficients. Okay, so first off, we're going to notice that this is an even function and therefore the integral over all real numbers is just going to be twice the integral over the real positive numbers. So now to compute the value of this, we actually want to use polar coordinates, but we only have an x squared in the coefficient and we need another variable y squared in the coefficient so that we can convert to a polar form. Because these variables are just arbitrary x and y, we can actually just multiply the integral by itself replacing x for y and this is actually just going to be our original integral squared. Okay, and now because x and y don't depend on each other, we can actually write this product of integrals as a double integral over the product of the functions themselves. If this is difficult to just see intuitively, try out an example with simple functions and you can see that if you integrate a function in x multiplied by a function in y, the function in y just kind of acts like a constant. And so basically a double integral is the same thing as a product if the variables are not related to each other. Now with this double integral, we can make a simple polar substitution and we make sure to multiply by the Jacobian R because we're making a change of variables and you need to multiply by the chain. Now we have an R in front, we see that this integral is actually very simple to solve because the derivative of R squared is 2R, so we have that in front to use the reverse chain rule and integrate this easily. Doing this and then multiplying by the 2 pi we get from theta, we get that this expression is equal to pi. And if we remember from earlier, this is the square of the integral we wanted. So our original integral is equal to the square root of pi. Okay, so now if we go all the way back to our original problem, which was integrating this function with constants. So integrating our original function, 
we get the relationship between the coefficients that a equals one half times the square root of b over pi. Now this one half we have in front is inconvenient, so what we're actually gonna do is replace the value of b with 2b in order to make this one half go away. So for our original expression to work out, we're actually gonna have a b over two in the coefficient to balance this out. So now we have an expression in terms of b and x, which is fine, but now we want to find out what the value of b actually means in this context. So I mentioned in the last video the concept of variance, which is basically how far away on average is a point from the mean of a random variable. This basically gives us an idea of the spread of the distribution. In this case, we can see that if we increase the value of B, the distribution actually gets much tighter around the origin. The probability of landing an arrow far away from the origin gets much smaller if we increase B. Therefore, we can kind of say that B is like the skill level of the archer. A really skilled archer will have a high value of B because their distribution will be much more tightly surrounding the origin. In this way, we can see that increasing B decreases the variance of the distribution of arrows but we still want to find the relationship between B and the variance because we don't know. So like in the last video, what we're going to do is compute an integral that gives us the variance of our distribution of arrows. So to compute this, we're actually going to use another calculus technique, which is called integration by parts. As we can see, we have an x squared term and then we have an e to the x squared term, which is not good for the chain rule. However, if it was just an x, then we could use the chain rule. So that's actually what we're gonna do. We're gonna integrate a product of two functions, one of which is x and one of which is x times e to the x squared. The reason we do this is because in integration by parts, we basically want one function that's easy to differentiate and one function that's easy to integrate. Okay, so now that we've determined these two functions, what we do is we differentiate the first function several times, in this case until it is zero, and then we integrate the function on the right until we've reached the zero on the left. Notice that we end up having to write an integral for another function on the right, but if you remember from earlier, we've actually already determined the value of this integral because of the nature of a probability function. And we can go ahead and substitute that value here. And then by the integration by parts formula, all we have to do is multiply these functions together in a tabular format and then add them up with alternating signs to get the value of the integral. Okay, doing all this work, we finally arrive at the conclusion that the variance of our random variable is precisely one over B, which is perfectly convenient. Now what we can do is actually describe this probability density function using its variance by just substituting one over sigma squared for b. So now we have an expression for a probability density function that naturally arises from this game. If the mean is not zero, then we can just shift x by a constant. And now we have a formula for a probability density function described entirely by a mean and a variance. If we remember from the last video, this distribution function, it describes the normal distribution and is extremely convenient for calculations. And in the next video, I'm going to explain why the normal distribution pops up everywhere and not just in the hypothetical example of archery.